In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Just a few months before I became your rector in November of the year 2000, I went for a brief visit to Russia. After landing in Helsinki for a few days, 11 other Episcopal priests and I took an old Soviet-era train to St. Petersburg, and we checked into some huge American-owned hotel chain. I can't remember which one it was now. I was delighted to see that I could get highlights of things going on back home on television. First, and of the highest importance, I was able to see with my own eyes Antonio Freeman's spectacular catch that gave Green Bay a victory over the Vikings that week. And on Wednesday of that week, in the wee hours of the morning, remember it was November of 2000, so it was an election year, I turned on CNN to find out who the president of my country was going to be. Except there was no election yet. Something about hanging chads down there in Florida. I had thrown the whole damn thing to hell. And there was this much younger then, Vladimir Putin, who came on the television screen, smiling as he lamented that, that America's having such a difficult time with democracy, and he'd be glad to send some advisors over here to help us sort all this thing out. Now thinking back, those were the good old days. Is there anybody other than me who's sick of the whole political thing? And as I think back on almost everything about politics that I can remember for my whole life, there have always been lamentable things. Before cable news, we didn't know about it as much. Before social media, it didn't just come on our phone so quickly. But you know, if we uh, know how to manipulate that algorithm appropriately, we can make the news feed suit our I mean, preferences. But there's always stuff out there. There always has been. Nixon's sweet little speech about his dog, Checkers. And of course, in the 1960 election, we have to wonder if JFK really won or did Mayor Daley throw a bunch of ballots into Lake Michigan, as people claim. Did President Johnson lie about what happened in the Gulf of Tonkin to have an excuse to escalate the war in Vietnam? Was Nixon a drunk and insecure sociopath? Can you remember watching the Watergate hearings day after day, just like a soap opera, with John Dean and Sam Irvin becoming household names? And was there no one, I mean no one, who figured out the, the acronym, the committee to re-elect the president spelled out the word creep? I mean, come on. You remember Gary Hart and Donna Rice and the good ship monkey business? What about Fawn Hall and Ollie North and my college, my, my seminary classmate's husband, John Poindexter, who gave the world the phrase plausible deniability? I have used that with Fiona to no effect. <laughs> and next Wednesday, when we wake up, and look at the papers or whatever we get our news from, no matter who is elected, half the country is going to be disappointed, half the country is going to get mad. Oy vey, is this really as bad as it gets? Is it as good as it gets? I don't know. But let me tell you, it really ain't nothing new. In today's gospel, we have an encounter between Jesus and a really corrupt politician. Hugely corrupt, horribly corrupt. I'm telling you, he is big league corrupt. He cheated, he lied, he stole, he extorted, he coerced, you name it. And I'm certain all of it could be found on a private email server in his basement. But because he was only about three feet tall, countless vacation Bible school children have turned him into some sort of cute pet and mascot. Did anybody other than me learn to sing Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he? And he climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Well, he wasn't cute. He was a greedy, selfish crook. And like most crooks, he didn't like himself, I betcha. He wanted something better. And maybe he wanted to climb that tree just so that he could see. 
being a short little fella in a grown-up world. Finally, even he, a rich man, could join the top 1%. Okay, Bernie. But maybe, given the sort of reputation he had around town, he just wanted to hide, like Adam and Eve wanted to hide themselves in the bushes when they were filled with shame and remorse and discovered that they were naked and afraid. But isn't it an interesting theological point that when we think we have hidden our shame and securities most thoroughly, that is when they are most openly on display. We may think that we're hiding, but almost any kindergarten kid can see our naked rear end sticking out of the bushes. And certainly Jesus saw Zacchaeus. If I were doing one of those modern Bible translations that Father Dan Clark is so fond of, I would have translated that verse we heard in the gospel this morning, channeling Vince Lombardi's voice. Zacchaeus, what the hell are you doing up there? Come down and let's go to lunch. And so he did. And it was a scandal. All the respectable people marveled that the young rabbi was so gullible that he would associate himself with a crook like that. But for Zacchaeus, as for all sinners who encounter unconditional love, it was an opportunity. Not that he was an opportunist. He was sincere. And he didn't just have a heart filled with remorse. He had a heart filled with repentance. Whoever I've cheated, I will repay. I will make restitution. I'll give back four times whatever it is that I have taken. I just don't want to carry this heavy burden of shame anymore. And to that, Jesus said to him, Today, Zacchaeus, today, salvation has come to your house. Now this all happened as Jesus was making his way up the steep, windy road from Jericho to Jerusalem on his way, the last trip to the cross. He was on his way to die for you and for me and for Zacchaeus and for the sins of the whole world. He is the Lord of our lives and of this world. And while it is important who is in the White House and the Kremlin and the Congress, and while it's important that we follow our Christian values and seek a political order that is just and fair and responsible and honest, all of these things are subordinate to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we can have less anxiety and more peace in our hearts if we remember that and keep first things first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things, well, they'll simply take care of themselves. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.